top hat, if you can't guess by now, is, is going to be a Rubik's Cube one. Um, I'm actually going to teach the Rubik's Cube this time, or at least this is going to be the first of a several part series on the Rubik's Cube. Um, this is just the interactivity phase. Um, now, this is kind of small. So I'm going to use a normal one of my cubes, and it's fairly bigger. This one, though, has a different color scheme than most. This is the European style color scheme. Um, it's going to be a little bit confusing. I don't feel like fixing it on this because I just take too long. But normally, this is yellow, uh, white, opposite of yellow. This one's green, opposite of yellow. Um, I think basically only green and white are mixed. Yeah, so on these two, green and white are swapped on the bigger cube. Um, but they, basically, this is the notation uh, segment where I describe all the things that I'm going to teach you in later ones to help you learn. So here we go. There's six faces to a cube. Okay, and each of them on a Rubik's Cube has a certain name. There's up, down, front, back, left, and right. Okay? Now, we take the first letter of each of those, and that gives us our letter notation. There's U for up, D for down, F for front, B for back, L for left, R for right. Okay, now be sure not to confuse bottom and down. Because if you say B, all you might think bottom. No, it's back. That always makes up new people. Okay? Now, when a notation is written for an algorithm, an algorithm, first of all, is a series of moves that perform a certain outcome on the cube. Um, okay. So if it was written, it would have the letter of the face for the turn, then it would either be a plain letter, a letter with a little apostrophe or prime after it, or a two, as in squared. Um, first of all, you can turn it 90 degrees clockwise. That is just a plain letter. Okay? Now if it was a letter with a prime or apostrophe, it's a counterclockwise turn, a single counterclockwise turn. That's counterclockwise. Okay, now if it were a U2, that would be up to squared. So you do 1, 2, or 1, 2. The squared does not matter which direction you do it. Okay, so if I were to do R, I'll listen, I'm going to do it for you guys. R, U R prime U prime over and over again, say times six. It comes back. Okay, I know I'm kind of dribbling on. But that is basic notation. Um, later on, there's going to be some different ones like an uppercase R would be, it would be clockwise. Okay. But a lowercase R would take two layers. Now that's more of a fancy notation, but I'm probably going to use basics for you guys if I use them at all. It's going to be a lot of visual and a lot of learning. You're going to have to probably watch the videos several times in a row to understand them all. Okay. There's also some other ones that might not be as significant, but I may as well mention them now. There are three axes, X, Y, and Z. Okay? X go through L and R, okay? Then you look at the R face, and if it was X prime, you do counterclockwise for the R face. You rotate the whole cube. Okay? If it was Y, it goes through top and bottom. You look at the top face. If it was y squared, you do a double turn. Okay? 
And if it were z or z prime, you go through the front and back. You look at the front face and rotate it accordingly. Okay. A major thing to remember now is the centers never move in relation to each other. Okay. You may think, oh well, what if I go like this and move the center down? Well, guess what? All the ones around it move moves in relation with it also. Now inside here, inside the puzzle, the centers are all connected. The center pieces are all connected inside the center of the puzzle itself, and it's just solid. And they, everything ro ro rotates around this puzzle, around the core. Okay. Also, I'd like to point out there's three types of pieces. There are centers, corners, and edges. Okay. Now there's eight corners, twelve edges, and six centers. The six centers are connected to each other in, in the middle. And um, yeah. Okay, um, if you're looking to solve a 2x2 two two Rubik's Cube, also sometimes known as the Junior Cube, um, it's just like solving just the corners of a 3x3. Not many people realize that, um, which is still difficult if you don't know what you're doing. Maybe if people are like, oh, I can solve a 2x2 two two, but not a 3x3. Three three. Probably not. Um, if probably, most people learn the 3x3 three three first. Um, so that is the notation thus far. We have up, down, front, back, right, left in this case. I'm trying to mirror it for you guys. Um, um, there is a lot of very, uh, very large amount of websites out there to teach you the Rubik's Cube. Uh, there's also many, many methods. There's the Ru method, which is, uh, it's hard to explain, but that's one method. The, but the, that's just a small method, actually. I wouldn't say small. It's very, fairly well known. But there's two major methods. Um, there's the Friedrich and the Petrus method. Now, I'm breaking it, this down uh, like a lower level of the Friedrich method. The Friedrich method involves getting the first two layers together in one, then solving the last layer by orienting then permuting, which causes me to, uh, or reminds me that I need to teach what orient and permute means. Orient means taking it to a certain piece and twisting it so the, it's twisted right, basically. Permuting is taking it in that, its layer and rotating it around. Like, I'm going to show you a basic permutation that I know. Okay, now this one swapped these three pieces around and just them. That is a permutation, okay? And then it's back. Now, an orientation, it took these three pieces and twist them off of the white face. Do you see how they're untwisted? So that's the difference between permutation and orientation. Okay, now back to talking about methods. Another method is the Petrus method. Okay, what they do is they build a 2x2 two two block on a corner, expand it by, uh, to a 2x2x3, two by two by then solve it using only uh, up and R, I believe. You can make it up and L if you'd like for left-handed. I'm a left-handed, but I still use R. I find that uh, really helpful when solving my puzzles. Um, now, there's going to be some terminology you might also want to know. It's called finger tricks. Finger tricks are, instead of going, I can go, and I, I don't move my hands. I make my fingers do it. Now, most Ruby cubes you will have are probably not very well lubed or broken in. I do not suggest trying to do finger tricks. I will use them because it causes me to use my move my hands around less, and it also obstructs your view a lot less too. Okay, so that's that. Man, I'm not gonna cut out all this extra stuff. You know what? You're just gonna deal. Okay, I'm doing my best. It's already over ten minutes. I've noticed. I'm probably going to cut all over there. Um, so I've covered the basics, okay? This is notations part one, because I know I probably missed 
lots of stuff. I will add that in notations part two. I don't know how my parts there will be, but that's about that. I'm going to cut this off because you're probably sick of listening to me. So that's phase one. We'll get into start, uh, solving later.